Vacuum tube Tesla coils are pretty cool. They're Tesla coils that can generate lightning coming out of the top load using a vacuum tube. Now, one thing about these vacuum tube Tesla coils is that as is with just the oscillator circuit and the coils, it will produce a pretty big spark, but a lot of times people are limited to interrupting the spark, which means turning it on and off at a rate of 60 hertz or 50 hertz for those people in the UK. And that is turning on and off the spark. So you can actually overdrive your Tesla coil by adjusting the rate at which the spark is turned on and off. Because if you make the spark so that way it stays on for longer or on for shorter amount of times, you can actually drive the tube at a higher voltage and a higher current, and that will allow you to have a more powerful Tesla coil because you're not overheating the tube or putting as much strain on the circuit because it's on for less of a time. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to modify almost any vacuum tube Tesla coil setup. So that way you can use a bench function generator as a staccato interrupter and how to do it safely so that way you don't hurt your poor bench function generator. Let's get started. All right, so first off, we're gonna start with this typical vacuum tube of a Tesla coil circuit. Now this circuit I've kind of modified. I've gotten rid of this RF capacitor and I've gotten rid of the grid leak circuit, but almost every vacuum tube Tesla coil follows the same class C Armstrong oscillator circuit. And the place we're going to modify is the cathode to ground. So the cathode in many vacuum tubes is the filament and that's connected to a filament transformer. And then you also have the ground part of the filament or just one side of the filament connected to ground. Now what you want to do is you want to erase this so that way it doesn't connect to ground. And if you run your Tesla coil without this connected to ground, nothing will happen. The circle will not oscillate. No lightning will jump from the tower. So what you want to do is you want to add something called a silicon controlled rectifier. And so I have a few silicon controlled rectifiers right here. And basically these are devices that allow you to switch high currents. And they look like a diode like this. This is schematic symbol, of course, but then the diode has another wire coming out of the bottom. So what you want to do is you want to put this diode in between the cathode and ground. And what happens is you can control the current flow or more like turn it on and off through this silicon controlled rectifier. So if you apply any voltage greater than one volt to the gate of the silicon controlled rectifier, it'll allow a large current to flow to ground. Now, one of the advantages of a silicon controlled rectifier is that they are able to handle very large currents and they are just very good for this purpose. So what will happen is it'll turn on, it'll allow a large current to flow through, when you take the voltage off, it'll turn off. Now with the silicon controlled rectifier, even if you take the voltage off, it'll still conduct if there's current flowing. And so in my circuit specifically, we have a diode and capacitor right here, which forms a half wave voltage doubler. This means that we're going to see a voltage, supply voltage that is going to already be uh, pulsed. It's going to look like a rectified uh, DC voltage right here. And so this voltage is going to allow the silicon control rectifier to turn off at the right points of time. And that is basically how we're going to add this. Now, one thing to consider when adding something to a high voltage circuit, especially a piece of sensitive lab equipment, is that you don't want the probes of this device connected directly to the silicon control rectifier. That, be, that is because there is approximately 2000 volts or maybe more, probably about 4000 in this circuit. And you don't want your lab power supply connected to this at all. So what you wanna do is you wanna implement something called an opto isolator. Now an opto isolator, looks something like this. What you do is you have a diode inside here. This is a light emitting diode and as shown like this. Then you have a transistor, a phototransistor. Now you want to connect this via a 50 ohm resistor to your function generator. And so that way it'll flash the LED at whatever rate you uh, tell it to. And then you connect this transistor to a three volt supply of a, a battery. So two AA's in series. 
and then that will flow through this transistor into an output prong. This output prong is going to go to this device, and then this is going to be grounded, the other side of the battery. We're going to have another 50 ohm resistor to ground, of course, and then this wire will go to the gate of the silicon control rectifier. And this allows full isolation to your bench sync function generator and the silicon control rectifier. So that way you can turn it on and off without having any electrical connection. This means that if by some chance, 2000 volts or something gets on the gate of this SCR, it'll be off dull isolated to your bench some function generator and that will protect it and make sure it doesn't get broken. So let's build this circuit and implement it. So as you can see, what I've done is I have taken my silicon control rectifier and my vacuum tube Tesla coil circuit, and I have put it in between this line, and this line runs from one of the filament uh, wires of the vacuum tube to the ground of the micro transformer. So I've literally just added the SCR in between those two lines, and I've connected an alligator clip wire to the gate of the SCR, and I've connected another alligator clip wire to ground, and that goes to my little circuit. So as you can see, we have a small little battery pack, and this battery pack has one wire that goes from the actual pack. That wire will go to the ground of the circuit. The ground will be down here. We also have the positive wire from the battery pack that goes to the collector of the phototransistor. We have a resistor going from the emitter of the phototransistor to ground, and we have this wire, and this wire is going to the SCR gate, and that wire is connected to the emitter of the phototransistor also. We also have the input of the optocoupler. We have the anode of the optocoupler uh, connected here. This will go to the function generator. We also have a 50 ohm resistor that goes from the cathode of the opto isolator, and that goes to a ground wire that will go to the ground of the function generator. As you can see, I have my function generator all set up. If I go here, you can see it's operating at a frequency of 1 hertz at a duty cycle of 50%. That means it's 50% on, 50% off. If I go to the wave, we can see that we have a square wave. You can see that the output amplitude is 5 volts at a 100% offset, which means it's 5 volts above ground and off, which is basically a logic level signal. And that is about all. The output is on. I will turn that off for the moment. We will connect the vacuum tube Tesla coil and see what it looks like. Activating the anode voltage. Nothing's happening right now because the function generator is off. As soon as I turn it on, there we go. All right, we're now going to see the difference between a vacuum tube test the coil operating at full duty cycle at 10 hertz and then breaking down the duty cycle. So you may not be able to hear me well, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you something called a beat frequency. And the frequency at which this is being pulsed at is 60 Hz normally. So what I do is if I change the function generator around in the frequency, as I approach 60 Hz, the beat frequency, or the frequency you'll see the arc flashing at, will decrease and when, once I hit about 59 Hz, it'll have a one second pulse and then off. This looks really cool, so here you go. This is, a, this is a beat frequency of approximately 14 hertz. As you can see, it looks very, very cool. Really significantly bigger arcs. As you can see, I'm increasing the beat frequency. It looks different as I approach. As you can see when I, as you can see when I turn off the uh, duty cycle, the arc gets smaller. 
is a 100% duty cycle almost. This is a very low duty cycle, approximately 15%. when I add a second microcapacitor smooth out some things. Hopefully we don't blow break here. Ooh. That's the cool. Oh. Much larger arc. So that is how you can make a staccato interrupter using a lab function generator. And now you can use that staccato interrupter with a silicon control rectifier to drive a vacuum tube Tesla coil at different duty cycles and different frequencies. You can see those pretty cool beat frequencies that came when you turned the function generator to a frequency that was nearing 60 hertz. And you can hear those cool beat frequencies happening. Uh, you, you could also see how when the frequency and duty cycle were at certain rates and there was a low duty cycle, you can see how long the arcs were able to get from the top load. And you can see how this staccato interrupter is actually able to greatly amplify the efficiency of your Tesla coil because you can overdrive the vacuum tube at higher voltages. That's why I was able to add a second capacitor to the voltage doubler circuit, which allowed me to have more power flowing into this Tesla coil. And typically, whenever I tried this, I would just blow the breaker. But with my staccato interrupter, I actually wasn't able to blow the breaker, or well, at least a little bit. And I was able to run the test of the coil at uh, very high powers. I was able to get extremely long arcs. I did blow the breaker like three times, though, which isn't good. But anyway, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for next time.